as true crime enthusiasts know, often serial offenders carry a moniker or nickname. Who could forget such terrifying titles like the Night Stalker and the Green River Killer? There was the Hillside Strangler and the Servant Girl Annihilator. These names were bestowed upon these killers by the press and even the law enforcement agencies that investigated their crimes. In some cases, the killer simply cannot wait long enough for the press or law enforcement to come up with a clever or even not so clever name. So some killers provide the press and law enforcement with a name to call them until they are discovered, outed, and pulled into the light from the dark shadows where they hide. Jack the Ripper penned letters to the police, authentic or otherwise, giving himself what he called the trade name when he signed the famous Dear Boss letter, Yours truly, Jack the Ripper. David Berkowitz wrote to NYPD Captain Joseph Borelli, telling him, I am deeply hurt by you calling me a woman hater. I am not, but I am a monster. I am the son of Sam. Now, in the garage, we examine another infamous serial killer, one that provided the press with his title when he told the San Francisco Examiner, Dear Editor, this is the Zodiac speaking. The Zodiac was laying claim to three unsolved homicides in the San Francisco Bay Area. He would go on to kill again. We have five confirmed murders in this series. Some say the number of those murdered by the Zodiac should be between 20 and 28. The Zodiac claims to have killed as many as 37 innocent victims. Still, to this day, this series of murders remains unsolved, and the one who called himself the Zodiac is yet to be identified. This is True Crime Garage. going to start off on a Friday in Vallejo, California. Vallejo is a waterfront city located in the San Francisco Bay Area of the state of California. This is where the Zodiac will find his first two victims or two of his earliest victims, because as we will later see, there is much debate on when and where the Zodiac started killing. On the night of Friday, December 20th, 1968, 16-year-old Betty Lou Jensen and 17-year-old David Arthur Faraday were out together on what most have reported to be their first date. 